yeah, we got a motley crew, and I love it. And, you know, we got that. We got Buckskin and Gale, the dynamic duo here. Buckskin, your your rugged ranger. Gale, she's wearing a hat that you could ride a bicycle around. <laughs> Bethel, you know, <laughs> prim and proper. Literally. Bethel, you know. Um, uh, O.T. Wells, that looks like you, you, you never really want to turn your back on him. And Rusk, it probably always. I just picture Rusk is always shuffling cards ominously or something. <laughs> but I don't um, know why, you, why that would be the case. I have. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, like, yeah, so Rogue? previously um, we picked up where where the Wild Five had left off. Everybody met up in Deadwood um, at the behest of the Twilight Legion. We're all members of the Twilight Legion here. Um, where we try to um, address the things that go bump at night and make sure the general public stays ignorant to them. Um, I think X-Files, but late 1800s and way cooler. Well, and X-Files was kind of cool. more crimes against, against humanity. That, that back to the things that go bump in the we don't believe in human rights either. Um... Uh, Govin Buckskin definitely doesn't. He just he just shoots. He just shoots. Uh, uh, that's his his human right. You have the human right to accept this bullet to the face. So Everyone has the human right for uh, their daily mental intake. So you got, um, to die. <laughs> got you got the civil right to eat some dirt. Um, so yeah, uh, y'all met at Deadwood. We had introductions. Um, y'all met Al Swearingen. Uh, but more importantly, uh, before that, you met, uh, well, some of you met Agent Rolf. Um, some of you are familiar with Agent Rolf, some more than others. Um, Agent Rolf set out kind of the game plan for you all. You are all to go back to Dirtwater to rendezvous with a ranger by the name of Ace Carson. Um, actual name is Asa Carson. Um, he is your rendezvous because uh, they uh, were there with a, a Pinkerton, who is all uh, both of these being Twilight Legion members, but uh, a Pinkerton. Um, named Showtime or Showboat, I'm sorry. They were there to investigate some missing people. Um, missing people started kind of happening shortly after the event of the Battle of Dirtwater. So, yeah, the Twilight Legion sent those two in to investigate, um, and shit hit the fan. Uh, Showboat is missing, and Ace left town to try to get help from his fellow rangers and to send out help to the legion um and that's where you guys come in so you're gonna run a view with him in dirt water <clears throat> and then uh go with him to the town of sundown where all this is taking place uh it's not too far from dirt water this all takes place kind of central north um uh, wyoming um almost perfectly south of Billings. Um, and yeah. <clears throat> so, after talking to Al Swergen, you guys kind of, uh, he offered free rooms for you uh, to use as you please, wink, wink, and um, leave the next day. Uh, if gave you kind of like a, a thanks, but a firm fuck off at the same time. Um and that's where we're going to start tonight. So. Well, uh, I do believe I was offered a, ho a horse by a certain Mrs. Uh, Calloway that I need to break in and see if it'll let me ride it. Perhaps indeed. Before we leave. I actually uh, <laughs> um, who, who would have uh, been awake at this time? Are we just all waking up the same uh, allocated, like, hey, 8 o'clock, everybody get up? Well, you need to leave <coughs> by around 9 o'clock in the morning. When you wake up, it's entirely up to you, as long as you make the train, of course. By, by the time any of you wake up, uh, <laughs> Rusk is already fully dressed in his suit and downstairs trying to entice some people to gamble. 
early. And not gambling because that's banned in this establishment, but trying to entice them to move over, go elsewhere, and gamble with him. Why don't everyone take a turn and kind of let me know what you did for the night and where you did end up sleeping? Now, you know, some of you might have passed out at the bar, huh? and I'll be right back. Okay. Uh, feels kind of corny, but uh, probably would have ended up somewhere either with buckskin, like in the same. <laughs> like, so, so You're really more, not right beating next- those married allegations. <laughs> Right, right next to my boy Buckskin, or um, on top of him. <laughs> ew, no. <laughs> I said, I said, ew. Ew. <laughs> he said ew. Get a ring, you guys. Got him. That's, really, what, that's my. That's my family, practically at this point. Um, I saw you guys kissing. Married people aren't family. No, you didn't. <laughs> <laughs> no, you didn't. You didn't see that. That's weird. Stop. I saw you with those dolls that look awfully like you and Bucks making them kiss. Telling, telling schoolyard, <laughs> telling schoolyard. Uh oh, I don't like girls. No, like uh, I, I'd say it's either, um, either uh, at least laying in a cot next to Buckskin, or probably like in the room yeah. on the ground next to like <laughs> ethel like most most of these men i'm not i'm not a fan of uh <laughs> um Racist. yeah we had swearingen bring in like the rolling cot that that's fair the hotels yeah well, but, but if if, if, that, if that's not the case then it's probably it's probably somewhere next to uh buckskin i'm at least used to him um most but m- most other characters i'm a little uh, little on the fence of especially if they're any kind of male uh individual but yeah that's where i'd probably be yeah two so two toes after we depart and you'll have to remind me what's the name of the of the, the gentleman who had a foul mouth who was pretty much giving us our orders what was his name again Ranger, right uh, well, Swearingen had the foul mouth. He wasn't. He wasn't really giving you orders. He's he's kind of um, <clears throat> he's kind of one lead, of the right? the lead figures of Deadwood. Um, okay, unofficially. So after our meeting, right, and the idea is that we would uh, get our provisions. Um, uh, after everyone kind of begins to leave his office, um, as the sun is setting, we're moving on. Um, Two toes kind of says to Bethel, if it's all the same to you, um, I don't imbibe in most of the uh, most of the things these these men are interested in. So I'm going to return to my room at the inn and uh, mm-hmm. take care of affairs there. If you need anything, you can come and get me there. Mm, Bethel would have probably done the same thing. Um, she honestly probably would have gotten her flask filled up and... She probably would have just... Um, oh, and I forgot to mention this last time, too, but on her flask, you there is a name engraved across it in, like, you know, that Bonanza font. Um, and the name Comic across sense. it... Yeah, no, <laughs> but the Bonanza font. No. Bonanza. Um, and the name is Michael across the flask. Okay. Um, and so she f- gets her flask filled up. Uh, she kind of walks past some of the debauchery. Um, diverts her eyes from anybody. Um, and yeah, she would kind of just hang out and drink in the, in her room, honestly, uh, pray. I imagine her like waking up at like dawn or something like that, just in a cold sweat from a nightmare. Her flask in her hand, empty. What, so. if I may ask, uh, what was the name again? One more time. Michael. 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 Mikael. Like the archangel? That's where that's where I was. Maybe. That, that's where I was kind of <laughs> like the John Travolta uh, movie. Either or like John or Travolta. <laughs> Govin, you asked me that's for a, a good beer last movie. game, right? I think, and I said five cents. I think, right? I think I said uh, five cents. I'm just, so, so I'm just giving my, yeah. I'm just giving myself a pat on the back because that's how much the book says it's cost. <laughs> like, like the best science fiction film, Battlefield Earth. With so, um, Rush would have probably taken up the offer of spending the night at this place. Uh, 
uh, probably up until uh, sundown, he would have spent the time drinking and talking with people in the, uh, what is it, the gem? The name of it? That's also where he destroys the gem, yeah. Yeah. Uh, he, he, he doesn't partake in the act of whoring, but... Uh, Nobody's fornicating! Conversation. Who's Why fornicating? is no one fornicating? You well, guys have well, to fornicate when you can, yeah. because it's I, it's I, important yeah. for your mental health. Got it. I'm no, pretty sure um, O.T. Wells is going to do enough of that for the rest. No. <laughs> I was just about to ask. What is O.T. Uh, Ru- Rus- yeah, Rus- other- uh, Rusk would have taken it in a more funny direction of taking some of the ladies of the night and sitting them down and chatting with them instead. <laughs> no, fair oh, enough. Like having advice. a deep conversation. Save a hoe. So what was your childhood like? Gets to know them. Well, my dad sold me. Right. Well, my you mama was a whore. My over. granny was a yeah. whore. You I just look over and you see him. Uh, no, um, this, this is actually serious. This, I'm not saying you're okay. You see him uh, with like two of the ladies that work here. Uh, and he's got the uh, Wild Five book and he's reading it to them because <laughs> they're uneducated so they can't read. So he's just reading <laughs> it and he's like acting it out a little bit for the <laughs> Probably That's the awesome. most kindness they've ever been shown. <laughs> he's, uh, he's very like uh on the side of the common man he grew like uh very much oddly for someone that's dressed so well and clearly has a fair bit of money he is very you know, kind to the downtrodden you know, give me a performance rask uh, oh very well uh, uh should be in uh let's see here performance <laughs> while he's looking that up real quick do any of y'all read wheel of time I think it's a. I think your character Nico is a blend of Gambit and Matrim Coffin from Wheel of Time. Matt, I briefly played the role playing game, but I haven't read the books or anything. Oh goodness Don't gracious! The you have the the, you've got the attention of the whole gym right now. You even see Al over the second story balcony, like listening down while he's <laughs> picking his teeth with a with a toothpick right now. Uh, you're uh, you're definitely making friends. Uh, I, also, every time I'm like acting out a part of the book that's about Caesar, I'm making him speak like an idiot. That's just another little thing. I, you really I, hate your old character. <laughs> Rusk does, yeah. <laughs> All right. Rusk is like, and then this guy. All right, now I need to. Idiot. I need to hear the the X-rated story of Ot Wells' evening. Otis Thoroughgood Wells, he really tied one on. Got <laughs> properly blasted there in the old gym uh, with a wit- head full of liquor. He uh, started brandishing his bowie knife from an imagined slight. And uh, none of the ladies of the night wanted anything to do with him out of that. <laughs> he stumbled upstairs and fell asleep in his boots and woke up with a mean hangover that he, he blames <laughs> on everyone but himself. <laughs> okay. Realistic. <laughs> All right. like well, that, really that was everyone's night and how they probably feel this morning. Not buckskin. Yeah. Oh, I'm wow. sorry. Yeah, but I, I imagine Buckskin just rested went and off. I mean, he shot a bunch of people. But <laughs> the whole town's dead. Actually. No. <laughs> no. Uh, no. Nah, he uh, Buck just would have uh, done what he usually does: a couple shots and then off to sleep. But I think before doing that, he was actually. Kind of humorously panning through the Wild Five book, just looking at all the stuff and kind of BSing with with uh, with Constance a bit, uh, being like, "Can you believe this shit that they wrote in here?" I wouldn't have any, in in a million, million years. I would have thought that that's what they would have written. What the hell is that about? Some like. I can't even carry the gun that they're talking about. Literally, the gun is like a, it's, it's some it. fantasized old musket that you're shooting with what? iron sights, and but you're killing things at you know 200 yards yeah. away with ease. Actually, Buckskin, you're killing. Is it, is it is it Buckskin's gun? killing like three men while ricocheting bullets off of metal signs and ridi- just yeah, ridiculous stuff. Actually, how do uh, Buckskin and Gale react whenever they hear uh, Rusk over across the thing mimicking Caesar as like an idiot? Uh, what does that? What does that sound yeah. like? Can you give us a reenactment, Rusk? Yes, what is, please do. 
<laughs> Please tell us what that's uh, like. what you 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 got how many raises is that on your performance? I mean, come on now. <laughs> <laughs> that would make me. <laughs> yeah, okay, okay, okay. Uh, uh, I am not gonna do like. Look, that would me be me doing a character that is putting on a fake persona that is acting out a character as a fake version of yeah, that. It's character. role play inception. Yeah, it's really, based off of, this is yeah, Zenith. Inception. This is Zenith of of this is Pinnacle role play by Pinnacle Entertainment. Yes, yes, that too. What he said. Moving on. Okay, so um, yeah, you guys are reading the the the, the dime novel um, and having a good kick out of it. Looking at it, and then I literally lean over, and I'm talking to Buckskin. And I go, "That doesn't even sound like you. Why'd they put that into the novel? That don't make wow. sense. You, you were well, funny, no. I, I saw. Well, you're oh." You really? You think? All right. Well, if that if that's what you think, I do. I do. My jokes are hilarious. All right. Give you me one. You don't think so? <laughs> Give me one. Ah, uh, <laughs> shit. What How did fast the can you right? say to the Chinese triad? Do you have yeah, a Do you have a joke lined up for me? I, I, I don't. I don't. I don't got one right now. I'll have to wait until the morning. I'll think of one by then. I'll get you eventually before this trip is over. How's that sound? Before this trip I is over, all you better, hey, and you better give me that pinky promise. If you don't give me a good one, pinky prom I'm going to be pissed. You told me you're going to give me a good joke. Fair. Yeah, you're going to revert back to Gale if I, if I don't come up with a good joke? Don't do that. Character regression? <laughs> I'll, I'll give you the benefit of the doubt. How about that? You give All me right. a good joke. I'll get something. Me, I'll get something lined up. You you give me something. I'll give you something back. How about that? Whoa. Okay. <laughs> oh, wow. well, I don't know where that's going, but sounds like a plan. Get more than lawyers, not. right? It's nothing <clears throat> like that. What the Let's hell? Let's get married already. <laughs> no. What are y'all on about? But You're not even here. Gale. I'm ordained. <laughs> in a tree. Gosh darn it! Jesus. We can do it right now. <laughs> to While you. we're on the topic of Gale and Buckskin, uh, so uh, when you two, the, you two have special abilities from the previous campaign. <clears throat> if you want to use them, uh, it will it'll for now just require a successful spirit check. Okay. My abilities transcend beyond bullets. <clears throat> So, and for those okay. um, who weren't here last campaign, I don't know if Buckskin or Gale are hiding it, but yeah, mm. a little, little something. Um, we already saw that like Gale Buckskin and Buckskin made. could see something behind Rusk. Um, I don't know if they divulged that to Rusk. I don't recall, to be honest. Uh, Gale kind of teasingly mentioned, uh, I see your friend there. I first yes. took us her referring to O.T. Wells, and I said, I don't know that man. No, not him. I don't know, Matt, man. That's not my purse. That's my purse. No. Um, all right. So you all wake up the next day. How do you reconvene? Um, you have until 10 o'clock. I'm sorry, 9 o'clock to make it to the train, and it is heading out at 930. All expenses paid. Um, yeah, yeah, so... so Two toes having not imbibed at all from the night, uh, mostly recovering from the impossibly long trek from Louisiana to Wyoming over the past several days, several days and potentially several weeks. Come to think of it, since we were able to take a train most of the way, but there isn't a train that runs north south at this time. Uh, so a lot of horseback and train ride. Um, Two toes does wake up relatively early and uh, is seen. Um, kind of leaning up against the uh, facade around where the, the parlor doors are to where they're staying and uh, has his pack in hand and seems to be ready to hit the road. Is seems, <clears throat> seems distractedly eager to uh, get moving. 
Yeah, Rusk was also up early, as is befitting of an educated gentleman uh, rising with the sun. Uh, and wishing to ingrain himself with the rest of the party, uh, he had actually gone down and arranged for um, good drinks and if they do serve food here, for some food to be ready for once everyone else wakes up and comes down. Ethel would probably wander down not long after. Um, she would greet two toes probably right away. Um, and also Rusk kind of noticing that he's... I imagine like Rusk like sitting at a table and there's like a plate of food and then like drinks at every seat. No, no, no. <laughs> right? I'm, 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 yeah, I'm at the table, but the, the plates of food have like the little cards with your names hastily scribbled on misspelled because it's some poor worker that's barely literate. Yeah, yeah Bethel would notice that and she'd be like, wow, Rusk, uh, thank you. You're, uh, <laughs> very accommodating. Yeah, and two toes while leaning up against the post, waiting for the rest of the team assemble, is kind of hand rolling a cigarette. And uh, as he motions, as he goes to uh, lick the paper and roll it up, motions towards uh, motions towards Bethel, Bethel without saying anything, kind of indicating if she had wanted one. Uh, Bethel will not be like, yeah, certainly she'll certainly have one. <laughs> um, and then in the first act, to kind of. The first act of camaraderie with the team, also saying nothing, motions towards, I apologize here, make sure I get the name right, towards Rusk, and to the same, indicating if they wanted, <clears throat> and has his hand ready to reach into his tobacco bag to see if he also yeah. wants <clears throat> a rolled cigarette. Rusk will uh, say, no thank you, I come uh, with my own, and he like slides up a pack of pre-rolled like cigarillos out of his, uh, what's the name of this little pocket thing? Yeah, yeah, the, yeah, yeah. The not the lap, not the lapel. Uh, I know what you mean, but yeah, and and uh, two toes uh, recognizes pre-rolled cigarettes, which in that era are very expensive and not and are relatively rare. Yeah, it's just specifically cigarillos, not just cigarette. And uh, I will actually take out the packet, noticing like the recognition, and I will uh, open it up and offer both you and Bethel one. I won these off of a man back down in. Uh, Arkansas. Played hard for it, but <laughs> unfortunately, uh, not hard enough. Also, where I won my current horse from, but that's another story. That's right. Thank our you. Horses, that's right. Our horses are tied up outside as well, I'd imagine. Beth will take a cigarillo and sort of store it like in her, uh, in her under things, under her dress. Look, I'll save that for later. Thank you, Rusk. O.T. Wells makes his way down into the bar. His pants are tucked in his boots. Uh, his hair is kind of disheveled. Puts his cowboy hat on. His shirt's kind of unbuttoned. And you can see he has like a long necklace. And anybody close, they can see there's like black shriveled ears on this necklace. And he's like buttoning up his shirt and putting his duster on. He goes to the bar and he slaps down 15 cents and he goes, three shots. I need them now. Quick. Train's leaving. And he quickly douses these shots down. And, uh... uh yeah, two toes, uh, two toes recognizes the string of ears and doesn't say anything, but is wondering if how many of them were native folk because that was pretty common for cowboys to collect those. Ethel grabs the cross around her neck and she notices him and looks at just kind of looks at two toes <laughs> to see because she would probably assume that too like you know she'd be a little spooked by it honestly she wouldn't say anything to ot and since a shot that's highway robbery <laughs> but i need to you know, put down uh i put down 30 cents and you know painfully take one shot <laughs> Give it a few seconds before I do the next. Slam down the, the shot glass. That's how I start kind my day. Painful. Spit on the floor. Finish buttoning actually, up my shirt and finish the it, last shot. You, you actually reminded me. All the plates of food and like the drinks that I got, there is one spot missing, and that's OT. There isn't one for him. Oh my god, okay. My yeah. shots. My he's, he's, at a the bit bar. Too, he's a bit too rugged for me to like him. Uh, oh. Uh, I almost called you sheriff. Uh, 
Warden is it? It's not Warden. I'm sorry. You're all mother. my inmates. Marshall. Mother. Um, yeah. I prefer mother. Mommy. Um, are our horses I, are, are our horses all tied up in front, or are they uh, waiting by the train? They can be. Uh, they're either going to be. Uh, if you you could have wake woke up first thing you did, go to the livery and and grab them if you want. And have them outside. Otherwise, um, they'll be at the livery and ready, ready for boarding onto the train, along with all the freight and all that junk. I think not, not, hey. not long after uh, Wells made his way uh, downstairs, uh, Buck would have been not far behind. I would say getting up. Buck's just going to go down for a shot as well, but he's also getting a cup of coffee and just kind of mixing it together and getting ready. Oh, that's for the day. how I start Most my day. Moses' way over to the table where the rest of the group is at and just says, Morning. Hmm. I, I point towards uh, the plate that I got for you. Now, uh, I wasn't I sure it. what you would like, but I heard that you're uh, a man of the outdoors, so I managed to get some You've venison. Been too much, Ooh. haven't you? Wow. Five, uh, yeah, by the way, yeah. uh, Russ, that's 50 cents a plate, brother. Yeah. Oh right. Yeah, uh, he, yeah. He he likes his eggs that way, but you know, you're reading too much into it. Almost literally. Are you? Still, are, are you here already? <laughs> yeah, two toes. I, I I am trailing right behind <laughs> Bucks. Was kid. Bucks Bucks can by any chance butting up his pants when you guys came down? From okay. <laughs> oh my. God. I was already fully. No. Is she fixing no. her hair? <laughs> is her, is her makeup kind of messed up? <laughs> Do you dare say that? Tortoise? I'm pretty sure Buckskin saw Gale uh, slit a man's throat while under possession and might be permanently not interested in that aspect. Uh, who sure knows? Maybe that's, people, that's a turn off. Yeah, I was going to say, maybe, maybe that's got, Buckskin's thing. I don't know. She probably liked it. Say any of that in character? Femme no. fatale is definitely. I, that, that, that's what I wouldn't I'm call it a kink. I would just call it I'm like. No. <laughs> Excuse you. That's why endearing. Russ gets very polite. He tips his hat, says morning, and points to the plate saying, I got uh, a sold some food, a healthy breakfast. Are our accommodations paid for by the person who organized our mission, or are we paying? Your rooms were paid for by Alice Warringen, and your travel fare was organized by Agent Rolf. Yeah. But. Chill rations, food, small things and the like. Out of pocket. Uh, Rusk will be taking a sip of his drink and then uh, look over towards Gale and say, uh, Now, Miss uh, Miss Galloway, I believe you uh, mentioned something about a certain unruly horse that you were trying to get off your hands. You'd not be wrong, of course, but uh, I really don't know you well enough to even give you the satisfaction of handing off an animal that uh, belonged to a friend. Well, uh, Is that what you're implying? Well, I'm not. Pardon me, I'm not quite caught up on the novels yet. Uh, I've been out in the field for a while, so I've read the newest volume yet. But I was under the impression that you uh, almost killed Caesar, and you're calling him friend? Really? Almost. And that's <clears throat> part of a book, a novel, a fantasy. Well, it's the only information I have to go off of, so... Until and you, you prove otherwise, that is the information I have. It, I apologize for assuming, but that you have is a lot, you have a lot more to learn. I, I understand. I am simply going off the information I have. Buck, yeah, I think to put it uh, put it blunt, bluntly, Rusk is uh, there's a there's a lot more story than written on them pages there. Well, and uh. I would be glad if you were willing to share it down the line. There's a word called eventually. That's quite... Yes, that is quite what I said with down the line. Uh, we can do that. 
I'll teach you something. You'll figure it out. Two toes now, is kind of sorry. Two toes no, is kind of nervously I, rolling a cigarette and uh, looking eager to move on out. Two toes, you seem what? like you are on your toes. I'm I'm sorry, y'all, but food's getting cold. I paid a good amount of money. It's, uh, it's quite rude to turn it down. Get after your food. Uh, Mr. Two Toes. What do you yes, want to get off your chest? Say again? What do you want to get off your chest? Nothing that the road won't cure. So you just want to get yourself moving. Bethel? That's right. Um, Bethel. Anything you want to get off your chest? When you turn to her and say that, she almost looks like she's looking down and praying. But she's like talking. She's like whispering to herself something. And she's like, um, nope, I'm just happy to have a hot meal in me after quite some time. And, uh, I'm just, uh, just like two toes I'm fixing to get back on the road and uh thanks again Rusk for this lovely venison uh and she'll kind of like uh it was the late finish, her, finish her mumbling really quick after that like close her eyes again m start mumbling again and then she'll kind of dig into her food like trying to be slow and polite about it but you can tell she's like she's pretty fucking hungry so she's like she's taking big old bites uh, seeing you trying to be polite uh Rusk will I know you say. Now don't be worried. Eating messily is just a sign that the food's good. That's what my mama told me. I just ain't had a meal like this in so goddamn long. I it's hard to contain myself. I'll enjoy. <laughs> food eating. Food tastes better when it's eaten around. Well, I suppose we're acquaintances, not friends quite yet, but still better to eat with someone else. And uh, as I said. Eating messily, sign of good food. Don't be afraid to go in with your grippers if you have to. And if she sets her fork it. down and literally starts picking it up with her hands. <laughs> if you oh, say gee. that. Are you enjoying your breakfast this morning? <laughs> you talking to me? Who? Yes, sir. Oh, uh, oh, like he's like. Uh, Reminder, I didn't buy him any his breakfast. Uh, OT's like buy. kind of slouched over the bar, maybe close by. He'll stand up and kind of saunter over to the group. Um, looking rough. He'll spit on the floor a bit of tobacco that he's chewing. He says, ain't y'all a diverse lot. Look at you. Looking like the circus is in town. <laughs> OT, you see a large man with long hair and a black beard come from behind the bar pick up something, bring it over next to you, and you hear a metal clang as he slams it down. You look down to see that it's a spittoon as he gives you a hard look. <laughs> you want me to piss in that? Pissing it, spitting it, I don't give a fuck. Just don't leave me anything to clean up. <laughs> All right, partner. We're going to be out of here quick anyway. I already had my breakfast. Y'all ready to hit the road? Yeah, Two Toes kind of uh, straightens up at the uh, first acknowledgement from someone else on the team about their readiness to move on. Bethel so. wipes her mouth with her dress, yeah. with the bottom of her dress. <laughs> her oh, empty man, plate. Yeah. Rusk will stand up and the uh, man with black hair that brought out the spittoon, I'll hand him a dollar to say I'm sorry for my acquaintance here. Ooh, dollar. That's a lot of money. A whole dollar? A whole dollar. Well, Shoot. They had a good night last night. It was so good they paid him. <laughs> oh yeah, do you have a do you have a trait that allows you to I oh, never mind. Never mind. I was gonna ask if you if you have characteristic traits that allow you to carry more money or maybe not carry more money, but anyway. We better hit get going. Pockets. We need to load them horses up onto the train, right? We gotta get packed up. Right. 
Oh. No, just remember I played in I'm at the last one. How much, so. Marshall, how much time do we have from whatever time it is currently till we need to be on the train? We'll say it's about 8 o'clock by now. 8 o'clock, so we got about an hour. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Do whatever you got to do ahead of time, but yeah, get your trains lo- or get your uh, horses ready. And uh, if you need to stop at the store real quick, might as well do that. Got about an hour. I think Buck's going to just get up, put his duster back on, and kind of adjust the, the ranger badge and mosey on out of the saloon or the gym. I'll follow Buck. Yep. Uh, two toes files in behind the rest of the team and. Uh... Begins looking for Isuba, his horse. Yeah, Bethel will kind of, she'll go up to her horse, Jezebel, and um, do that little whispery thing. She's like petting her and kind of talking to herself again. I love the name Jezebel for some reason. It's a biblical name. It sure I is. really like it. <laughs> it yeah, yeah. It's biblical, but it is also like the most Western thing you can hear. Yeah. Jezebel. I love it. So, uh, Buckskin, you a, you a law man? You got that look about you. Yeah. Was and still am. You got a star? I do. I show it to you. Ain't that nice. Where do you normally hang your star? Some people, you know, they put it on their outer coat. Sometimes it's on the inner uh, inner side on the vest. Hell, some people put it on their fucking hat. Yeah, mine, mine's on the inner vest. I don't put it on my coat. It's on the, on the vest inside. I want to show some art with it left, on left, the uh, uh, like left breast stuff. area type. All right. Hmm. What about you, Mr. Wells? I ain't got a couple. I ain't got a star, but I collected a couple. <laughs> doesn't um, Just, doesn't OT I'm have sure. like stuff on his face? He has a a brand of an M on his cheek that kind of goes into his beard a little bit. It's it's really ragged. It looks like they left the the brand on his cheek for way too long. If you, if you see if it's recognizable as an M, Govin, you would definitely know that to be a brand of a murderer. Hmm. I see you got uh, you got your own little marking of your own. Mine's a little less permanent though. <laughs> hey, hang out with me long enough, you'll sure to get one. Now they just call that doing my job. Not gonna have any problems, are we, Mister Wells? No, I'm a problem solver, Mister Skin. I like to hear that. <laughs> Whoa! You just call me. You just call me Buck. Mr. Skin. <laughs> that means something else. No one's called him that in years. <laughs> I'll leave that to Gail. That was my father's <laughs> name. You don't call me that. That's not her name no more. Now we call her Constance now. You, would you have introduced yourself as just Constance, no Gail? So that's like not something we know. Uh. And <laughs> have you read the book? She, no, uh, fuck no. <laughs> the book. She, probably she, have it she's probably introducing herself simply as Constance, not That's as Gail. Okay. So you know her more than likely as Constance. Um. So the other group is. I'm sorry. Could I? Could I add? One more thing here before we move on from the conversation mm-hmm. with, with Absolutely Bell, not. me and LT. Uh, yeah, I, I think seeing that, um, so the marking, and I, I'm kind of giving you a hard time a little bit, uh, LT. I assume you're picking up on that somewhat. But um, I'm going to look at you, you're just kind of dead in the eye. Buck will look at you and just say, I understand sometimes, you know, the paths we take and the choices we make kind of don't always end up turning out the way you want them you know we all have our we all have our problems and i kind of point to my neck and we all run into situations where you know the markings we receive kind of dictate how other people perceive us i don't know you that well i've never seen you before you wear the marking but that don't always mean anything so 
you know, you trust me, I'll trust you. We got a job to do and I'm just here to help. I appreciate That's you not passing judgment on me, Buck. I ain't come this far north to cause trouble. Tell you that much. That's all. Well, so you guys are having this conversation as you meander through the mud, whether you're leading your horse or on horseback. The Iron Dragon Railroad um, station is is through the Chinese district of the town. There's a lot of sights to see. Some of you may not be used to it. Some of you may. Um, As you kind of go through and you see all sorts of sites it's still a lot of tents in town even though deadwood has been established for a good 10 years now but it, it goes a little downhill on, on when you cross the railroad tracks as it were you arrive at the railroad uh, if you don't have your horse they're being loaded on freight's being loaded on passengers are being loaded on everyone's getting ready to depart as nine o'clock approaches You all board on the railroad. Um, tickets provided already for you. As soon as you get on here, it's you. You notice that the railroad is pretty fresh. It looks pretty good, actually. Um, all along the outside, on the on the wooden parts of the train, there's embroidery. There's painted on designs of the time. And as soon as you enter in one of the cabins, you get a nice smell of of kind of oiled pine and fresh linen. It's, it's all around quite nice. Um, the railroad, or the, the train rather, has a few different parts. There is a sleeping car, a uh, regular waiting car. Uh, and since technology and trends and society has advanced a little further than our own timeline, there's even uh, already dining cars on trains, uh, if you can afford them. Um, you guys, how, however, do have a first class ticket. Which is nice because when you don't, the place you have to go poop is right by the basin on the back of one of the of the regular cars, and it is um, lacks privacy. We'll say that. Uh, but uh, on the nicer cars, you actually have a place where you can go and close a door. So you guys get situated, sit down. Conductor goes by, has a device with him. You see him clicking as he approaches someone else. He clicks, 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 and you see these small gears kind of swash around. You can tell that they have letters and numbers on them as he approaches each individual person. He stamps their ticket, goes to the next, click, 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 changes the combination, stamps your ticket, and so on and so forth. And we begin heading off. So, on the train, let me take a gander here. Um, As I said, we have the passenger car. Um, There is a dining car with a small kitchen and everything. If you do want to eat, it is a a decently long train ride. Um, It's going to take a couple days, um, uh, for lack of knowledge. Uh, Going from Deadwood to Billings and then down to Dirtwater, all that's pretty adjacent to each other, but... We'll say two days. I don't really know. But um, for the evening, there's a, a car that you can go in there with state rooms where you all can go in and sleep. Um, might be where you all hang out because there's, it's more private when you are in your state room rather than um, going and hanging out in the passenger car. Up to you. Uh, there is a lounge car, too, where cards can be played in the bar. Uh, and that's about it. Um, front of the train, um, coal car for the fuel for the train directly behind the coal car is going to be your freight car with freight, all your goods and everything. Um, uh, continuing on to the, um, lounge car, dining car, passenger car, sleeping, and then of course the caboose.